Welcome to Tough Tracks. Today we're going to take a look back at some of the unbelievable action early this year on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We'll also get some predictions from Army Armstrong about how the top professional monster truck racers in the country will perform while battling for the national championship. And then we've got multi-engine modified tractor pulling. Tractors with four and five engines straining against the heavy sled on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. TNT Motorsports action is right around the corner on Tough Tracks. Today on Tough Tracks, we're going to look back at what has been some awesome, awesome monster truck racing leading up to the points championship. Army Armstrong, Grave Digger has been outstanding early on. Well, Dennis Anderson was picked by some of the top drivers to be the truck to beat in 89. The preliminaries to the 89 points chase proved just that. Anderson's tough. He found a combination with Gary Porter out of North Carolina. He's also going to be chasing national points like the Clydesdale truck out of Georgia. They're from all over the country chasing the national points. Awesome Kong. The biggest problem here, Scott, they can't find out who the driver's going to be this year. The cheapest part to change on that truck is the driver's seat right now. Equalizer's another one that we really have been keeping an eye on, and Army is really becoming a great story this year. This kid, keep an eye on him as he goes off in this race against John Bream. A new suspension. The rookie driver can concentrate on doing nothing but driving the truck, and he does a good job, but this is who they're all going after. Rod Litzow, USA 1, the defending national champion, Army. You've got to knock him off because he's on the top of the mountain right now. Also on this program, we're going to be looking at the 9,200-pound modified tractor pulling from the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky's Freedom Hall. Army, this is the granddaddy of all pulls, and these are really the big boys. Engines, engines everywhere. These are the heavy weights in the modified tractor division. The reason being the weight is made up in just pure numbers of engines to the track. Awesome power. We're going to see it there at the Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky a little bit later. But when we come back, we begin to answer the question, can anybody catch Rod Litzow and defending national champion USA 1? It's when we return right here on Tough Tracks. Welcome back to Tough Tracks. I'm Scott Douglas with Army Armstrong reviewing what's been happening right here on the Tough Tracks TNT Monster Truck Challenges. Now, when we were in Toronto, Canada, Army, great action at the Coliseum Exhibition Place, Toronto. Well, the Grave Digger came out first, had a good qualifying shot. Could this be the turnaround point? We knew Anderson was having problems last year due to a tremendous amount of breakage in the transmission as a result of too much horsepower. Anderson comes out, attacks the track, but... The old black crowd still followed him. The transmission went away. One of the crowd favorites on the tour, not able to hold it together, Scott. This was obviously one of the more entertaining matchups here. Rod Litzow and USA 1 going up against the Jersey Outlaw Army. The Jersey Outlaw being driven by a rookie driver who's doing a great job. Keep the name Mike Wine in mind. He's going to make a name for himself in this sport. Just like the old days of the gunfighter, the new kid comes out on the right of the screen going against the veteran, the national champion, USA 1. And what a race as the kid puts him away. The Jersey Outlaw comes away getting that win there. Now, again, in Toronto, we got to look at an incredible semifinal matchup as Bigfoot and Andy Brass out of St. Louis, Missouri, went up against playing for Keith. This was a great matchup, Army. A super matchup. Two blue vehicles. One of them a Chevrolet in a far lane. One of them a Ford. The Canadian fans getting to see the greatest in monster truck racing. Side by side, they line up. Brass trying to put a win under his belt for the awesome Bob Chandler crew. It was a beautiful run as Andy Brass showed his dominance north of the border chasing the national championship. All right, here they come. Big foot and playing for keeps side by side. And look at the foot of yeah. Andy Brass. Just leaps out on him. The kid is smooth. Andy Brass, definitely a premier driver in this sport. That put Big Foot in the final against the winner of the next matchup. Dave Wachorek in nightlife would be coming out in his truck out of Grand Island, Nebraska against Bennett Clark in Clydesdale, Potter Springs, Georgia to see who goes up against Andy Brass and Big Foot. They matched up once again. Really an exciting matchup and a good contrast. Well, two different theories here. Why Sorek closer to the camera runs a short wheelbase. You know the driver style we've talked about. It. He drives with his head out the window. The other side of the coin, 
Clydesdale with the longest truck on the tour. Which is going to be the best? It's going to be the short wheelbase nightlife going against Bigfoot for that final. Well, Dave Wychork with a good run right there, as you mentioned, Army, and that got him in to go up against Bigfoot. So you get nightlife out of Grand Island, Nebraska, and, of course, Andy Brass, the Bigfoot truck, out of St. Louis. They match up in a super championship at Toronto. Yeah, but also, Scott, it also narrowed down to Ford versus Chevrolet, the old classic battle. Who's going to take the win? From north of the border, we're going to find out in just a second. Andy Brass works the right side of the track. Why, Sork will be working the left side. Both drivers take their time going into the starting lane. They were always playing mind games with each other. Why Sorek knew that Brass had a lot of heat in his transmission, was trying to make him get a little bit hot. He pulls into the lane's last, raises his hand. Al Goss, the starter, waits patiently on the starting line. We look for a green flag, and this is what happens. Bigfoot coming out, and there you see Nightlife, a great race. Bigfoot blows a tire, but it didn't stop him from getting the win at Toronto. Beautiful driving job by Andy Brass. Believe me, the left front tire went away upon impact at the end of the track. Super competition. All right, Bigfoot getting the first win in Toronto, but then we come back with more action from the Coliseum Exhibition Place, Toronto, Canada. Again, as you look at Bigfoot right there uh, with a handshake and a congratulations from Dave Wychork and Nightlife. Already looking ahead to the next day, Grave Digger. Here he goes again, more problems for Dennis Anderson. Same scenario. Anderson comes out, nails him to the wall. And starting to watch the way that he attacked when he hits the cars, the way that the chassis set up. You notice it's on the rear wheels. It's doing a wheelie. Now watch what happens when he hits the cars. The front wheels set down. They start to make some contact right about now, and it breaks on him. Too much horsepower. It's hard to believe there's a motorsport, Scott, where too much horsepower can hurt you. But it sure has for Dennis Anderson and Grave Diggers. You can see the problems, the puff of smoke coming from underneath. It was not also a good day for Rod Litzow in USA 1. This is a qualifying run. He also has bad problems. Litzow came out. He hit the jump. Now, I want you to watch the way the vehicle lands. It kind of springboards off. It goes over to the driver's left. Litzow powers out of it. He knows the front wheel spin, and he cocks it around. Now watch the right rear wheel. Bam. If that tire had not blown out, he would have gone over for the fifth time this year. Wow. All right, let's move to the semifinal round of this matchup, Army. Bigfoot and Clydesdale side by side in the semifinals. Andy Brass won the last outing. He goes back in the exact same lane. Andy Brass is making it look easy in Toronto, Canada, and the Canadian fans love it. Bigfoot with the semifinal victory on our second shot out of Coliseum Exhibition Place in Toronto, Canada. So that set up the other semifinal with Star Monster going up against Carolina Crusher. Keep your eye on Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher. Brand new 89 Chevrolet. The Star Monster, a new truck on the tour with us. Based out of New York, trying to make a name for himself. Getting up here, bumping heads with some of the best monster trucks in the circuit. But... Porter dominates the right side of the track. So this proved one thing. The right lane is the lane to be in. We're going to the final. Who's going to get that all-important right lane, Scott? Boy, and you know they were going crazy in Canada. Just wait for these two to come out. You got Bigfoot and Carolina Crusher in the final. I mean, this is what the people came out to see. These two guys matching up in the championship matchup. Carolina Crusher against Bigfoot and Army Bigfoot goes to the right-hand side. Bigfoot in a Ford. Carolina Crusher in a Chevrolet. The Canadian fans are on their Feet. They both leave the starting line side by side. A beautiful race, but Bigfoot pulls it out right at the end. And there's a little contact at the end between Bigfoot and Carolina Crusher, but Andy Brass has made it two for two at Coliseum Exhibition Place in Toronto. Army, the replay, a great race. Brass came out, jumped on the lead when they hit the, the, the cars. Now, what's interesting here, what's starting to develop, as you notice, both drivers kind of getting together. You notice Brass kind of like steering on ice, backs into the corner. Everything's looking good. That shows that we're definitely dealing with professional drivers. Then we bounce. Now, you got to remember, Bigfoot, we've been here on two occasions. Bigfoot is two for two. Who can bump him off? This was his third shot at Toronto as we brought it to you here on Tough Track. In the semifinals, putting Clydesdale away quite convincingly. What lane did he do it out of, Scott? That's what's interesting. I don't think you can pry that guy away from the right side of the track. He's built a nest over there. The other semifinal to see who would get the third crack at Bigfoot sent Carolina Crusher up against the Jersey Outlaw. Now remember, the Jersey Outlaws already pulled a major upset in the first outing by putting the USA one truck away in the first event. Not to be the case today. The final is set again. Ford and Chevrolet again. 
who is going to get lane choice? Bigfoot. Jersey Outlaw was able to advance over Carolina Crusher because Carolina Crusher jumped the start. In the final, I don't think it really matters who came out against Bigfoot. In Toronto, it was all the foot, Army. Foot, like we say, he just built a nest. The, the fans got to see some super races. Andy Brass showed definitely he is going to be a force to contend with if he chases the national championship points in 89. He's from St. Louis, but he owned Toronto, Canada on this weekend. It was Bigfoot. Well, we're going to come back and take a look at some great tractor pulling with the modifieds from the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville when Tough Tracks continues. Don't you dare move. Hello. And at Long Island's Nassau Coliseum in just a moment when we return to Tough Tracks. Enjoying a very special edition of Tough Tracks as we review what has happened so far right here on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. And Army Armstrong, as we headed to Long Island, New York, in the Nassau Coliseum, Bigfoot was coming off three in a row in Toronto. Bigfoot was on a roll, three in a row. What's going to happen? Everybody thought, this is it. He's going to go for the number four. But something happened in New York that had the people all around America watching this tour. That being John Moore out of the state of Tennessee with another Ford called No Problem. And this had to be one of the races of the year, and this is why. Moore came out to perfection, made a perfect jump, and upset, and that's an understatement, the Bigfoot truck defeated for the first time in 89 by another Ford. You know, there almost wasn't even that big a roar. I think everybody was stunned. No they, problem. Pulled off the upset. And John Moore, he said, watch for me in 89. I'm, I am for real. It was not a fluke. He's going to be going after him. Speaking of going after him, everybody's going to be going after Litzow with the awesome national championship, True Value Hardware USA 1. He picked up this semifinal win over Starvin' Marvin Smith and Stomper out of Arnold, Missouri. So USA 1 was in the opening final, and he was going to get either Carolina Crusher or, no problem, and John Moore, who had upset Bigfoot, and I think made a lot of fans coming into this match. Well, this brought out the old Ford Chevrolet battle. Everybody wanted to see this Ford stay alive, but the kid from Carolina nailed him to the wall. Chevrolet was going to the final in the form of a yellow truck out of North Carolina. And he was going to match up with the other Chevy, the USA 1, the defending national champion, Rod Litzow against Gary Porter, two of the most likable guys on the circuit, two of the best machines on the circuit, and they're in the Big Apple ready to go for the gold. USA 1 at Carolina Crusher. Neither one of them had a win in 89 at this point. Who was going to go out of here? Look how close it was. It became a photograph finish for us. Both drivers taking it to the limits. You notice how close they're running to the walls at the end of the indoor tracks. It was a war. USA 1 wound up taking a win by less than four hundredths of a second. So Rod Litzow opens our invasion of New York with a victory. And that sent us to the second round or the second day of action in New York that we brought you here on Tough Tracks. Semi-final round action with John Breen and Mad Dog knocking off no problem to open up the semis. Well, now John Breen out of Missouri, he and his brother spent 1988 doing a lot of research and development with the Lenati Cam-based operation in Memphis, Tennessee. He came to this event and says, we are ready to be competitive. And he showed us right there he can do it. You talk about a matchup that was worth your dollar coming through the door. Here it is. Oh, Bigfoot yeah. and Grave Digger in the semifinal. Everybody was on their feet. The question is, can Grave Digger not break? Bigfoot comes down. Andy Brass awfully smooth. So Brass will be going to the final with the big blue Ford now. He's already won three this year. Can this be number four? We're going to find out in the final. It's Bigfoot and Andy Brass lining up against John Breen and Mad Dog. Superb final. Bigfoot had put away Grave Digger. Here's the replay as they come right into your living room. Army, what a matchup. The foot on the left and Grave Digger on the right. Well, Andy Brass just came off the starting line perfect. He got over the first jump. The truck settled down. And in all honesty, I just don't think that the Grave Digger was attacking. There was some kind of problem with that truck and that rut. The final but, I mentioned a moment ago, Big foot and mad dog we told you the story about john bream they worked 1988 trying to get it ironed out to get to this point this is the first time they've been in a final on the national championship case he's working a left lane to perfection he actually was ahead of bigfoot got out of shape Bream had problems, and that put Bigfoot into the winner's circle. Andy Brass picks up win number four in the prelude to the boys' chase. Bigfoot looks hot as a pistol as he gets the win over Mad Dog. Just barely and only by a mistake by the Mad Dog. All right, more Monster Truck Review coming up, but after...
The awesome power of Tuck Tracks is roaring right back at you as we continue our review of the season from Long Island's Nassau Coliseum. The monsters rocking and rolling the Big Apple. We're looking at round three of the four races in Long Island, New York. Grave Digger Army Armstrong in his qualifying run. He certainly had a wild one. Well, Dennis Anderson, as they, many of the drivers said, this is going to be the vehicle to beat when he gets it right. He's still trying to get the combination worked out. He actually detuned on horsepower. He's generating only around 1,500 horsepower, but he still has a tendency to break things when he makes a run. But when he makes a run, believe me, you know he's in town. Look at the chassis flex. Anderson came out literally attacking the track. The awesome red lights of the grave diggers shone high in the sky in New York as Dennis Anderson would not back out of the throttle. They will always remember that run. Dennis Anderson and Grave Digger does not leave anything in the locker room or the garage, as it were there. Well, that set us up to the semifinals, Army. First one was Bigfoot against Mad Dog. You've got to remember, Scott, the last time these two went together, Mad Dog actually made the better run, but he was disqualified. He ran off the course. Andy Brass knows that. Brass is going to be working a left lane. Mad Dog goes over to the right lane. Ford versus Chevrolet, but more than that, John Breen wants to beat Bigfoot. Look at the run. Breen comes out and puts Bigfoot on the trailer. John Bream is alive and well in 1989. I'll guarantee you he'll remember that run the rest of his life. The first time he ever beat Foot was in New York. And he beat him convincingly. No photo finish there. It was all Breen and Mad Dog. So Mad Dog barks his way into the final. And he'll go up against either USA 1 or Carolina Crusher. The Chevys line up side by side. The white USA 1, the yellow Carolina Crusher ready to go at it. Well, Chevrolet's already flexing this muscle in New York. Breen just did that by putting away one of the premier fours. The question is, which one of these Chevrolets is going to advance? And it was a great run with USA 1 coming out on top at the Carolina Crusher showing he also is for real in 1989. Two of the absolute powers in this sport and this time it was the defending national champion USA 1 in Long Island's Nassau Coliseum. So that takes to the championship the Mad Dog right there John Breen against USA 1 and Rod Litzow. Well if you've been following the tour you know exactly what happened. The Breen boys have been putting it all together and this was the day. The dream came true for the Dream boys. All that research and development paid off as they take their first win on the professional tour. The Breen boys racing toy, able to get it done. Mad Dog and John Breen whips Bigfoot in the semifinals and then beats USA 1 in the final. What a day for the Breens. Then we went to our final program coming your way on Tough Tracks from Long Island's Nassau Coliseum. The semifinal round has Carolina Crusher against Bigfoot. You talk about another of the matchups that people want to see when they come through the door. Here's one of them, the Crusher and Bigfoot. One thing that was interesting in the previous race, Bigfoot was pushed over into the left lane. That was not the case. Andy Brass had to do some heads up driving as he was running a camera crew into the track. A little bit of a fire breaks out on the truck as a result of a broken uh, brake line. They get it put out quickly, though. No problem there as Bigfoot with the problem in the brake line. Carolina Crusher beat him, though, and we're going to get a look at it one more time. The Crusher with a great run. Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, comes out, and you can see he got a great start. Both drivers doing an ex extremely good job of driving because you got to remember they're running straight at the wall down at the end of the track. You can notice the film crew down here with us. Everybody jumping for high ground, but Bigfoot did have a problem, the problem being all these other monster trucks are catching him. And they're really going after him. All right, the other semifinal set Mad Dog coming off his big, big win in Long Island uh, uh, over USA 1 and, of course, over Bigfoot, the previous show, going up this time against another of the real legends in the sport, Stomper and Starvin Marvin Smith out of Arnold, Missouri. Both of these drivers come out of the Show Me State of Missouri, both in Chevrolets, John Bream has already shown he is going to be a contender for the national championship this year. Meanwhile, Marvin Smith, they call him Starvin' Marvin, working that left side of the track. He wants to show that he's going to be a player for the championship, but John Bream, believe me, was on a roll in New York City. Boy, he flat whipped Stomper in that one as Mad Dog moved into the finals. So it's Mad Dog and Carolina Crusher, a sensational matchup coming up. John Breen, who had been great throughout the weekend in Long Island, going up against Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, a truck that everybody knows is going to have to be reckoned with on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge when they start totaling the points in 89. Well, so far this year on 89, you got to
to remember, these are preliminary to the points chase. These are not points events. It's kind of a qualifying, if you will, event. But Bigfoot has shown that he can be competitive. Mad Dog has shown he can be competitive. USA One can be competitive. Carolina Crusher has yet to move into the winner's circle. This could be that time for him. He knows John Bream is going to be tough. Breen's on a row. Crusher will be working the left lane. Breen over to the right lane on all Chevrolet final in New York. Could we have a first-time winner, or could John Bream come back and win two in a row on Long Island? We're going to find out right now. Scott Douglas. Line them up on the uh, right-hand side of your screen or the left-hand side of the track as the trucks work it. Carolina Crusher out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, and Gary Porter. And then John Bream, as we've talked about, Mad Dog coming off the biggest win of his career in the previous week's show. Mad Dog gets a good start, but look at Carolina Crusher. Just puts him away. Problems for Mad Dog and Gary Porter, and Carolina Crusher gets that big first win of 1989 and he does it in front of the big crowd in the Big Apple, Nassau Coliseum, Long Island, New York. All right, that's it for the preliminaries. It was time here on Tough Tracks to start totaling the points on the 1989 TNT Monster Truck Challenge. So when we come back, we're going to take a look at that first weekend of points racing in Chicago, Illinois. All the big dogs are going to be there as they battle on the first round points action of the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. You've got the best seat in the house right here on Tough Tracks. Don't you dare go away. Tough Tracks now taking you to Chicago, Illinois. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas and Army Armstrong as we continue to review what has happened on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Well, Army, everything we've looked at in Toronto and New York was just getting ready for this. The start of the point season, and we did it in Chicago. Stomper on his qualifying run really had a wild one. Well, Marvin Smith showing what a premier driver he is. Had you or I been in that vehicle, we'd have been in trouble. And the reason being is we see the replay here. We'd have had a tendency to back out of the throttle. And notice what he does. The left front wheel is screaming. He full throttle in order to pull himself out. That shows heads up driving by Smith. Straightened her out and stayed out of big trouble. In one of the first matchups, it was USA 1 in Nightlife, a scary moment, Army, for USA 1 in Rod Litzow. The telltale is the front wheels of the truck. Litzow plants the nose of the Chevrolet into the wall. What happened was an axle broke on the truck. The rear wheels, we're going to have a replay coming up. You'll be able to see the rear wheels on the truck are actually trying to chirp and to stop the truck, but the front wheels are freewheeling, and that pulled him right into the wall. Uh, you know, USA 1, Rod Litzow, obviously, as you can see, he took the bricks out of the wall, really smacked it hard, and that's what you're talking about, Army. Okay, now, keep an eye on the front wheels. That'll tell you the story. A little bit out of shape. He hooked it over. He has to power right now to pull it down. Now, watch the front wheels. They keep turning. The rear wheels are actually having a tendency to want to turn back. Meanwhile, wall. And he hit it hard, too. But they got the truck back, and they were able to move into the semifinals. USA won against Carolina Crusher and Gary Porter. But, you know, until you talk about lightning striking twice, Army, it was almost unbelievable what would happen on the second run. He gets out okay in the first one, waves to the crowd. Everybody's excited. But as he lines up to go against Carolina Crusher, he's in the same lane, and virtually the same thing's going to happen to him, only this time the impact will be more. Watch USA won. Again, he's on the right-hand side of your screen, the farthest away from you right now. And, Army, I know... Oh, everybody really got shook up here because he hit it hard. Well, what he hit hard was an 18-inch square concrete beam. It went into the driver's compartment. Very, very fortunate here. The roll cage kept the driver safe at this particular time. They did have some problem because it was actually wedged into the wall. We were just about three feet from it, and it was such a helpless feeling. We're going to show a replay a little bit later, but the, all the crews came over. The safety crews were there. The EMTs were right on the spot. You see some of the other drivers helping him out, but Scott, as many years as I've been doing this, I was scared here. You'll notice on the replay again, watch the front wheels. That'll be an indication of no front brakes. They're turning. The rear wheels are locked up. Now keep an eye on the top of the truck. He goes into the beam. He doesn't even hit the wall. The truck is wedged under that beam. So here we are. First points race of the season, and our defending national champion is out of it. USA won, won this race but it doesn't take a genius to figure out this truck wasn't coming back on this night in Chicago. But there was the biggest cheer. Rod Litzow getting out of the truck as the crowd roared in Chicago. They took him for observation, looked him over. Rod was okay, but obviously one of the scarier moments he's ever had riding that USA 1. Well, that sent us into the semifinal round, or make that into the final round, without the defending national champion. Carolina Crusher comes back to face Grave Digger. 
Grave Digger coming into the points races had not performed well in the season prelude. Everybody was wondering when is Anderson going to come alive? Right now. Anderson definitely started flexing his muscle. Porter made a great run, but Dennis Anderson made a perfect run out of the left lane. The Grave Digger starts to do what everybody knows they can do, win. Looks like Dennis Anderson used a lot of the winners, some of these test runs, when others were winning, to get a feel for what he had. He broke some things, broke some transmissions, had some problems, but obviously Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger were trying different combinations. The points opened up in Chicago, and he comes out ready. He had a great run against the Carolina Crusher, and I think we're going to look at it one more time as Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger get ready to go up against Carolina Crusher. you got to keep in mind, Scott, there's two theories on chassis design here. Carolina Crusher engines high and in the front. The Grave Digger engine is low and in the rear, and the truck's handled completely different. You notice as they go across the car, the Crusher is actually in a nose-up attitude, and the Grave Digger, he was getting down and getting dirty and getting to the finish line first, and that's what it's all about. Grave Digger opens up the 1989 TNT Monster Truck Challenge points race with a victory in Chicago at the International Amphitheater. Our second week on Tough Tracks in Chicago saw Bob Breen and Wild Hair of Jefferson City, Missouri hook it up with David Morris and the Equalizer from Springfield, Tennessee. What a close race. Now this kid out of Tennessee, you're going to have to keep an eye on him, but Bob Breen is going to be tough too. I'll tell you what. Mad Dog, Wild Hair, their team trucks, they found the combination, and Bob Breen has more horsepower right now than he has ever had. He's going to be a player for the national championship. We're going to take a look at it again. Bob Breen and Wild Hair, Jefferson City, Missouri, going up. He's coming up on the right-hand side of your screen against Equalizer, David Morris, Springfield, Tennessee. You notice that Morris actually landed, and also I want you to notice the front of the truck's a beautiful camera angle there. When you have a chance to watch the equalizer, notice how each wheel looks kind of lollygaggle, but it works. That's because of the chassis. We're going to cover that later on the Tough Tracks program, but right now, the red lights are in the building. The people are on their feet. That can mean only one thing, Scott Douglas. Grave Digger is lining up for the finals against that truck. Wild hair, Bob Breen, Jefferson City, Missouri. As you have been talking about, Army, the Breens have really been coming on this year. And right out of the chute, one of them, Bob, is into the final. But he's got to go up against Dennis Anderson and Grave Digger. And it is becoming obvious that after a winter of fighting and of breaking, of having problems here and problems there, Dennis Anderson and Grave Digger now have their collective team act together. And Anderson roars to victory, knocking Breen off in the championship. Yeah, but both drivers had an opportunity to take their first win of the year. Grave Digger already starting to flex his muscle. He is your national points leader. With two big wins in Chicago to start the TNT Challenge Point season. Now when we come back, we're going to talk with Army and get his predictions about the upcoming points race as all the contenders battle for the TNT National Championship here on Tough Track. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas, back on Tough Tracks and Army Armstrong. We have now begun the points chase. Let's look at the top contenders on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge for 89, and we'll start with the defending national champion, Rod Littow in USA 1. Well, the Minnesota native is number one right now, but he's going to have to fight like crazy to stay on top. The pressure's on him for being number one. Could he be a little bit shy? He was on his head five times last year. They've got a new truck coming out. We're going to be watching. USA 1, can he hold on to number one? That's going to be the big question. Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger. Gravedigger out of Virginia, one of the crowd favorites wherever we go. He's running a smaller engine, so we're looking for fewer breakage, and this guy is one of the guttiest drivers out there. He's a kamikaze pilot in a monster truck. Another guy off to a great start is Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. Porter out of North Carolina, Mr. Consistency in the sport. I don't think I've ever seen his truck break. It's amazing. He runs so smooth, he does all the work himself, and he has already told us by the middle of the summer, he's got a big surprise up his sleeve. I'm looking for a bigger engine for the Crusher by midsummer. A truck that is trying to change drivers around. Mark Brandt, Awesome Kong. Well, Mark Brandt was a driver in Awesome Kong the last time we saw it. We don't know who's going to be driving it the next time. The truck has always been super quick. The driver, like we said earlier, that's the cheapest part of a monster truck to change, is the driving suit. The equalizer is one we're going to keep our eyes on throughout the year. David Morris out of Springfield, Tennessee. This could be the sleeper of 89. He's teamed up with Gary Cook. They've got a unique driver in the fact he's a rookie, but he listens to the veteran. The engineering of the truck, the engine is mounted low, independent suspension all the way around. He's already proven the truck will work. Bigfoot and Andy Brass out of St. Louis. What can you say about Bigfoot? Bob Chandler has put together the best in the sport. Brass, they brought him from California. The big question we have is, is he going to race an open competition? 
Are they going to build a new truck to run against these guys? There's plenty of competition out there now. Bigfoot no longer sets at the top of the sport. Starvin' Marvin Smith, the popular driver out of Arnold, Missouri. One of the crowd favorites wherever we go with the awesome stomper. Recently, he's made a lot of improvements to the truck. The question is, can he go faster? I believe, yes, definitely, Smith is going to be a power force for the points championship. Clydesdale also is one to be reckoned with. We're talking about Bennett Clark from Powder Springs, Georgia. Well, the bull rider, the past bull rider out of Georgia, loves to make a lot of horsepower. Outdoors, we don't know. I think outdoors, he's going to run a whole lot better. The reason being, the long wheelbase is going to allow him to really lean on the engine. you got to remember, these walls indoors are very intimidating. From Lafayette, Tennessee, John Moore and no problem. Well, John Moore, what can we say about him? Last year, everybody kind of picked on him. This year, he's picking on everybody. He could be a sleeper truck. The truck is competitive now. He's aggressive. He's a new driver. He is going to go after the national championships. He could be a player. First of the Breen boys, Bob Breen and Wild Hair. Boy, Bob Breen showing he's alive and well. Last year, 1988, they spent the whole year research and development with an engine manufacturer out of Memphis, Tennessee, Lenati people. They found the horsepower. It's there. They've got a new truck on the way. He has more horsepower now than he's ever had in his life, and he's smiling more. There's the other Breen, John in Mad Dog from Jefferson City, Missouri. John Breen proved in New York he could win. He is up in the national points chase. A dark horse? I don't know. The veteran driver, he's been around in sport probably longer than any driver that we travel with. The driving experience, the new horsepower, he might be the dark horse outside championship. Speaking of outside championship hopes, looky here. Jersey Outlaw and Mike Wine. A brand new driver with the Ford Camp. Now the truck is proven. The driver himself is trying to get some time in the seat. Can the truck run? Yeah, I think it can make the horsepower. Will the rookie driver status hurt him? No, I think this kid's a natural monster truck driver. Mopar Magic has Gary Wiggins behind the wheel. Well, the North Carolina native representing the Chrysler Corporation, he needs some horsepower. He relies on the Hemi for horsepower. Three years ago, that was enough. It's not now. The experience will come as we travel around the country in 1989. Nebraska's Dave Wysorek pilots nightlife. Boy, this guy, he's another one that the Chevrolet people better keep an eye on. A short wheelbase driver, notorious for sticking that head out the window. He's tough on the short tracks. He's quiet, but he's definitely going to be dangerous. Army's thoughts on some of the top contenders as we head into the real outdoor part of the season now on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We've already seen him go at it indoors, and Gravedigger's got the early point lead. When we come back on Tough Tracks next week, we're going outdoors to Raleigh, the capital of North Carolina, and we'll see if Gravedigger and Dennis Anderson can hang on to the lead in the national championship points chase right here on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Army and I will see you next week right here on Tough Tracks. Thank you